guys. Happy Friday. Welcome, welcome. Oh, we made it. It's Friday. Yay. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but my week started out kind of slow. Not really much going on. By about Wednesday, everything was kicked up a notch. Great things happening. Had some really amazing conversations at our local Bead Society meeting. Hi, Suzanne. Um, yeah, and it's, I don't know, it's like the energy in the air, it's like everything changed. Early week, bleh, not so much. Kind of felt like a Monday and a Tuesday. Like I said, by Wednesday, things really kind of turned around. I don't know what's going on, but there is something positive going on. Hey, Dale, so happy you are here. And the rest of the week just kind of flew by, nothing but good things. I'm really excited. I've got a lot of things going on. And a lot of it I'm going to be able to share with you guys. Um, let me think. What can I share with you at the moment? Some of these things I can't really tell you much about. I may or may not, I can neither confirm nor deny, that I perhaps have a project coming that involves our good friend Neele Patel and some of his amazing silver silk. But like I said, I cannot confirm nor deny that that is happening. Hi, Karen. Um... That may or may not be coming up in the future. Um, I had mentioned a domino, like an altered domino pendant project. Uh, gosh, I don't know. Several weeks ago, I mentioned that to you guys. And I had actually ordered some rice paper print from China, and it never came. So that's why that project has not happened yet. I reordered, and this time I went with Ranger Inc., of course, because it's a company that everybody can trust and love those guys. So... I ordered from them and it should just be a few days now. So I just ordered some collage paper. So if you're looking forward to that altered domino pendant, let me know um, and we will do that together. Uh, you can get the collage papers. I've seen them at Hobby Lobby. You can get them in a couple of other places, but um, I just ordered mine because I'm lazy and two day shipping is great. <laughs> so I'll just wait for mine to come in the mail, which didn't necessarily work out for me so well when I ordered from China, but hey, you know, get what you take. It'll probably show up in January. Who knows? Um, so yeah, it's just been a really exciting week. I'm full of energy. I hope you guys have had a really good week too. I'm hoping that I can, um, I don't know, brighten your day and send you off into the weekend with some uh, inspiration. That's the word I'm looking for, inspiration. So what have we got going on today? Nothing but good things. We've got some exciting, exciting stuff to, or I, not we, you guys know. I've got some exciting stuff to share with you guys. I've got artistic wire in flat patterned wire. This is what we're gonna use for our project today. I cannot wait to show this to you guys up close. I really, really love this stuff. Um, you guys know I design for Beadalon, so I get a lot of great products from them. This is one that I've actually been holding onto for quite a while. Hi, Jane. And I have not done anything with it. I was originally planning to, and then, you know, life happens and you forget that you've got something. So I pulled these two packs out earlier this week and I was like you know what it's time for the flat pattern wire so I'm going to show that to you guys it's really really cool stuff I don't know if you've ever used any of the artistic wire that is flat that doesn't have a pattern on it I love that stuff too because you can hammer it and you can really ch change the texture of it I'm going to show you guys how to cut it how to use it just give you guys some creative ideas for that um and we're going to be using some of the Destination Hawaii beads from Jesse James Beads. However, when I originally started this project and I picked out the beads, I was using beads from, let's see, what is the name of this? Waikiki. That was one of my very favorite mixes that came from the Destination Hawaii collection. However, that happens to be sold out. So that either means that you've got these beads at home already and you can use them along with me or it means that you missed out and you get it didn't get a chance to pick these up and I am sorry about that but they were super popular super pretty but you can do this project with any beads that you want and of course the destination Hawaii collection has tons of other beads I mean you know other mixes in that collection that would be absolutely beautiful with this design as well uh, this design is kind of a weird one. There's a couple of different things going on. It's like a bracelet, but it's broken into two parts. Um, showing you guys, you know, a lot of different techniques. A lot of this is beginner friendly. 
as far as wire wrapping is concerned. So there's nothing super hard about this. It's just a fun one, you know, just kind of giving you a little bit of inspiration to take and do what you will with it. Um, let's see. One more thing. I know I've said um a bunch, but I'm I'm pumped up. I'm excited. It's Friday. Yay. <laughs> uh, what was it? Oh, it's free gift Friday over on Jesse James Beads. And if you've never taken advantage of free gift Friday, I highly recommend doing that because who doesn't love free stuff, right? So they are giving away the Tensha beads and they are beautiful. Hold on. I've got some. I'll show them to you guys. So when it is free gift Friday, oh, hi, Sarah. <laughs> When you shop over at Jesse James Beads on Friday for Free Gift Friday, you just add these to your cart. And let me show you guys, if you've not seen any of these, I'll show them to you up close in a second when we flip around. But if you've never used the Tincture Beads, they're really beautiful. These are um, Tincture Beads. I used to know the history of the Tincture Bead, but now I cannot remember. It is Japanese. And it is like a, they're either hand painted or it's a transfer process. They're just really, really awesome. Let me open these up, show you guys. You can get two of these with your for your free gift on Friday, and you can make earrings with these. They're so beautiful. Now, look at that. Now, I know, you guys, the camera is not going to do it justice, but these are so beautiful. Look at the flowers on that. And these are nice size. So you get two with your as your free gift. And, you know, there's a lot of different ones to choose from. Like, if you don't like this kind of milky color, they've got some black ones. I'm not going to take those out of the package, but you can see. So, the Tincha beads are there. They're really, really beautiful. If you've never ordered those before from Jesse James Beads, I highly, highly recommend that you go and check that out and grab a pair because I know what will happen. You will get those two beads as your free gift, and you will be blown away by how beautiful they are, and you'll order more. Funny how that works, isn't it? Okay, so today, like I said, we're making a bracelet. We're gonna use the flat artistic wire. Um, you don't really need any special tools for this except that I am using the heavy duty cutter today. I don't know if you've got one at home. You are more than welcome to use your regular cutter tool for this, but the heavy duty cutter from Beadalon is one of those that you can even cut memory wire with this. I don't know that they advertise that, but you can. This is like heavy, heavy duty. The blade on this is a good one and this, artistic wire with a pattern on it it's 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 some really sturdy stuff so I trust this over this to cut it with not that you can't cut it with this but this is just the cutter tool that I go to um, bell making pliers that's pretty much it not a lot of tools for this hi Emily hi Kelly all right so I'm gonna turn you guys around and we're gonna get started now I'm gonna turn my light on too you guys it's so hard to figure out the lighting in here and it really kind of depends on what the weather is outside and it happens to be pretty cloudy today. So, all right, let me move all of this stuff out of the way and let's get started. You guys, if you do not mind, would you please share this video? Um, you can do it now, you can do it later. Can you use memory wire cutters? You know what, Karen, I don't know. I haven't tried, I'm not, I'm not sure. So I can't say yes or no. <laughs> I'm sure you probably could though. I mean, they're heavy duty, right? Okay, so this is two packages of the flat pattern wire that you can get from Beadalon and these are under artistic wire. So when you go to their website and you can pull down the little pull down menu for shopping, this is under artistic wire, okay? It has its own heading because I don't know if you guys know it or not, but artistic wire used to be its own company. So it's all under the umbrella of Beadalon, but it is sectioned differently on their website, okay? So this is what I've got. Hi, Angie. You can get this in two different packaging. You can get the, let's see, this one is like the flower motif. And then this one is very geometric, okay? And you get three in each pack and you can get them um, individually as well. You don't have to buy the whole pack. You can just pick out the pattern that you like and buy it individually. Um, but I like the three packs because, I mean, you know, I like to have a variety of options here. So for today's project, we're going to use one of the geometric ones. I'm saving this floral pattern for something else. 
So, like I said, you get three pieces of this, and they are six inch pieces. Now, when I take this out, you can see what we've got here as far as the different pattern choices that we've got. You can see just how cool those are. Now, let me tell you about this stuff. It is super duper sturdy. Like, see, it's gonna take a little bit of force to bend that, but it's so worth it when you do, because then it's obviously gonna stay in shape. Now, I have taken just one piece of it, just a six inch, inch piece of it, and turned it into a bangle bracelet. So, I mean, you've already got ready-made jewelry as far as, you know, the wire is concerned. I did over here on the ends, when I cut it, I cut the corners off just because I didn't want to get cut by those. And then I hit it with an emery board just to file off any of the little metal bits that are there. But a six inch piece of this, you can make your own bangle bracelet with and you don't need any hardware. So that's pretty awesome. All right, yes, you can saw through this. You can use your metal saw with this, absolutely for sure. Okay, so another thing that's really super cool about this stuff is that you can add patina to this. You can use your Ranger inks on this stuff. Now, I have a huge collection of patina paints. You can use patina paints on this and you can use alcohol inks on this as well. And let me show you what that looks like if you add some patina to that. The patina inks will just go right down into that groove and really make that pattern pop. Super cool, really, really neat. That's one of the, probably my favorite feature of this patterned wire. It's just got, you know, there's just a lot you can do with this stuff. You can leave it as it is and you can really buff it and make it super, super shiny or you can add the patina to it, or you can leave it just like it is, like this one that I have on. I didn't do anything to it. I will, in a little while, buff it, but you could put this in a tumbler and get it really super duper shiny. All right, so that's what we're gonna be doing. And this is kind of a long project, so I'm gonna try to keep it as short and simple as I can so that you guys can get on with your week. Let's use, let's use this one. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this guy is we are gonna make a measurement. I'm gonna measure once. Actually, I'm gonna measure twice. <laughs> Cut once, isn't that the rule? <laughs> so I'm just gonna lay this out and what we want is we want, for one thing, we want our ruler to lay flat and it just doesn't want to. We wanna measure this out into one and a half inch pieces. Okay, so there's the one and a half inch mark. And then I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and I'm gonna go ahead and just grab that where that one and a half inch mark is. I'm grabbing it right there. And now I'm just gonna pull this away and turn my plier or my cutter tool around and go ahead and give that a cut. Now, like I said, there's a lot of force involved with that. This is some sturdy stuff. So yeah, those of you who wanna use your saw, definitely do that. The cutter will do it, but you've got to really bear down on it. That's why I don't want to use my flush cutter with it. Okay, so we're going to need, let's see, how many of these did I do? I think we need three of these. Yeah, we're going to use three. All right, so the next time that I cut, I'm not going to measure again. I'm just going to hold the piece right next to it. If it's not exactly precise, that's okay. We don't care. We're good. If you want to go ahead and measure because you are a stickler for perfection, go right ahead. All right, so now we've got two that are the same size, and I'm gonna cut one more. And I've got enough for a fourth one, but we're just gonna sit this over to the side because I don't think we need it. If you need a bigger bracelet, definitely go ahead and use this last piece, okay? All right, so we've got three pieces that are one and a half inches each. Now, normally I would, like I said, with the bracelet that I made, I would take a, um, an emery board or a metal file or whatever and file off those ends. We don't have to do this with this project because these ends are not going to be out where, where they're going to be up against your skin. We're going to roll these over and make really cute little links out of these. Let me show you. So this is what we're going to end up with. We're going to take our bell making pliers and we're going to roll both ends over. So this is gonna be on the inside and they're actually gonna be closed. This one's open because I had taken it apart for where I had originally had a, a bracelet design. Um, 
but that's what we're gonna create wow that glare is totally crazy but you can see that pretty design on there so one and a half inches when you roll the ends this is the size you're gonna get if you don't like a length this long you can definitely cut this down and make one inch measurements but when you make a one inch measurement and you roll your ends you've got a tiny little piece okay which is fine it just kind of depends on what kind of look you're going for okay so for ours ours rather well, ours I don't know who ours is for ours <laughs> We're using one and a half inch piece, pieces, okay? And we've got three, and they're not perfect, but I don't, I'm not worried about perfection, you guys. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bell making pliers. Now, these are the small size bell making pliers. And we are going to roll the ends. Now, I'm using the larger portion of the pliers for this, okay? So I'm just grabbing that wire right at the tip. And like I said, this stuff is sturdy, so it's gonna take a lot to move this it helps if while you're turning the pliers you're also pushing the wire with your thumb okay that's going to help give you some leverage and make a smooth loop and that's all we're doing we're just rolling the end over this stuff is strong you can see i'm shaking a little bit that's how that's how sturdy this stuff is okay so i'm going to take it off the pliers i'm going to show you i haven't closed this together yet I don't want to close it yet because we're going to link this to something else okay so definitely want to leave this open okay don't go ahead and close that up yet and then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side we're just going to grab that into the wire okay and then roll back and you may have to adjust your grip you know just to get a good grip on those pliers to roll this stuff over it is definitely strong stuff okay so when you look at it from the side this is what you've got like I said I did not close the loops up yet because we if we do we have to open them again and this stuff is strong and I just don't want to mess with it so leave them open for now okay so there's one we're gonna do that to the other two pieces as well just grabbing it with the bell making pliers and then rolling it over this is some seriously strong stuff leaving it open just a little bit and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side oh gosh there we go that one got closed a little bit too much but I think I can still get my link in there okay so there's two let's do the last one now, like I said, if you need a longer bracelet, the bracelet that we're making is going to be about a seven and a half inch bracelet. If you need a longer bracelet, you can either add an additional one of these, cut an additional piece of this, or you can add an additional bead on the other side. Okay. All right. So there we've got our links ready to go. Okay. And like I said, they're not closed. We're going to keep those open because we are going to add these little baby quick links now I don't know if you've ever seen these before or not but I know you've seen the big ones big quick links are everywhere you can get them anywhere the baby quick links you can get these um, from beetleon.com and this is the 10 millimeter size if you don't have these or if you don't want to bother with ordering these you don't have to you can use a 10 millimeter jump ring for this you can use an eight millimeter jump ring for this. So definitely just use what you've got on hand. But I like the quick link because it's a solid ring. Okay, there's not, there's no cut opening for this or anything. This is a solid piece. It's gonna stay together really, really well. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hook one of those guys into our piece of flat wire. Okay, and now I'm gonna come in with a pair of regular pliers. Hi, Carolyn. You are catching us live. That's awesome. I'm glad you're here. So I'm going to come in with my plier and I'm just using a, a regular chain nose plier for this. And I'm just very gently going to squeeze this down. Okay. So now I've closed that loop and my quick link is in there for good. I'm going to come over here to the other side and I'm going to hook another quick link in there. Okay. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Just squeezing with my pliers. Now, if you're worried that your pliers are going to mark up the wire, you can use nylon gel pliers for this as well. Just be easy with your pliers. Okay. So now we've got a nice little link with quick links on either side. However, see, I can see that little tip of the wire where it's rolled over. I can see that. Can you guys see that? I don't want that. So 
I am going to use my pliers this direction and kind of push that back where it needs to go. I don't want this little guy sticking up because the ends of this are sharp and we didn't file them, okay? But the good news is, is that we can give it a little push and there it's gone. Okay, so now you don't see it anymore. Okay, so now we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna take this link and link it to another one. Okay, and we're gonna close that up. You can do this two different ways. You can close it that way or you can squeeze it from the top. It makes no difference. I'm gonna add another link to the, or another quick link to this side. Okay, so you can see what's happening. We're creating a little chain here out of our flat wire and our quick links, okay? I'm gonna close this one up so that our quick link doesn't slip out. Okay, and we've got one last link. Same thing, closing this guy up and adding the last quick link. So what you should have at the end, oh, this one is a little too closed for that. There we go. So what you've got at the end is this really cool chain section. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? That pattern wire is just, that's just some really awesome stuff. I don't know. I'm always impressed with it every time I use it. I love it. Okay, so at this point, you could continue if you wanted to. You could make an entire bracelet just out of this. And then you could add the patina paints to the te to the texture on the wire and you could really have a cool creation and very very unique to yourself you know but we're going to change it up a little bit so we're going to do this this is half of our bracelet and then the other half of our bracelet we're going to do some wire wrapping and we're just going to make a wire wrapped chain to attach to make it the other end of our bracelet and then when we get that done we're going to add some dangles to this because just like over on the Jesse James Speeds Facebook Lives, we're extra. We like the dangles. We like the extra stuff. We like tassels and all of that coolness. So to create your chain, you're going to need several pieces, about three inches, maybe four inches long, of 22 gauge wire. You were just thinking the patina paints, Lena. Well, let me tell you something. I may or may not, I cannot confirm nor deny, <laughs> There may be a patina paints project coming up for you guys on the Jesse James Beads Facebook Lives as well. So if you love the patina paints, stay tuned because we've got lots of fun stuff coming up for you guys. Okay, so again, you're going to need to cut. Uh, you only need five of these. It looks like I have, let's see, I have six. I don't need all that. <laughs> All right, you need five of these or just however many beads you've got. About three inch pieces of uh, 22 gauge wire. I'm using the German style wire. You can use artistic wire here, it makes no difference. You could use a really pretty colored artistic wire to go with a patina paint. If you were gonna paint these, you could make it all match. That would be really, really pretty. So to get started, we're gonna come down on our piece of wire about an inch and a half, okay? And I'm grabbing that with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to bend that wire over the top of those pliers just to make a nice 90 degree. <laughs> Mine's a little bit more like a 92 degree. It kind of dips down, but that's okay. You've got that 90 degree turn, okay, that bend in your wire. And now you're going to come in with your round nose pliers. Grab that wire. Wherever you feel comfortable holding it depends on what kind of what size loops you want to make. I usually make mine always the same. It's just a preference up and over the top barrel. Let me move this stuff out of the way. Okay, up and over the top barrel of those pliers. You see you've got this funny looking little shape here. Okay, we're gonna take that off the pliers. This is what you've got. It's a weird looking little thing. Looks kind of like some sort of long billed duck of some sort. I don't know, just saying. Go ahead and push that wire all the way over so that you've got a nice loop. Okay, now I'm gonna put that back on the pliers. I'm coming over here, switching hands. And I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers and I'm gonna take my little tail here and I'm gonna wrap it around the wire at least three times, okay? All right, 
right, so now I've got that little tail. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna trim that off. Don't need that. All right, so what we have is an eye pin, except we've got a wrapped eye pin. Thank you, Carolyn. I'm so glad you're here. And I really appreciate your kind words. I really, really do. We have such a great community of people. So much support. I love it. All right. So threading on one of our beads. Now I'm going to alternate these beads. I'm using, like I said, these beads from the Waikiki mix. You can use whatever you want. These are some really beautiful Chinese crystals. I'm alternating in sizes. I'm going to start with the smallest one. Okay. So I've just thread that on. And now we're going to do the exact same thing over here on the other end. This is going to be the first link in our chain. Okay. So I'm grabbing that wire right above the bead, bending 90 degrees. You don't want to leave any space there. Okay. Be sure that your pliers are right up against the surface of that bead. Okay. Coming in with my round nose pliers, and we're just going to do the exact same thing that we did before. We're going up and over. Okay. Spin the pliers around. Continue around. Switch hands. You don't have to switch hands. It's whatever is comfortable for you. I have seen people do this all with their dominant hand. I cannot. <laughs> this is what's the easiest for me. All right. I'm wire wrapping around three times. And now we've got a little beaded link here with our wrapped loops on either side. Okay. I'm going to trim that tail off and I'm going to come in here and push down all my ends just because I don't want anything poking up. Okay. All right. So this is the first little guy that we've got and we're going to do all of them. There's only five of them, but I figured for those of you who are beginners, it doesn't hurt to see this five times. Otherwise, and if you're watching on replay, you can certainly skip ahead. Okay. Same thing. Coming down here, bending that wire. We're going up and over the pliers. Okay, adjusting. And then going all the way around. But now this time, when I take this off of the pliers, we wanna hook this to this guy, okay? So in order to do that, we're gonna take our tail wire, that's gonna be our guide, and we're gonna push that through the loop, okay? So now we're up here like this, and you're going to push the loops together and it'll hook to it to they'll hook together basically is what i'm saying okay so now you've got two links hooked together you don't have to use a um jump ring here if you don't want to that's why i'm teaching it to you this way sometimes the jump rings are just too much you know sometimes you don't want that so this is how you're going to link your chain together okay so now what I like to do is I like to come in with a pair of bent chain nose pliers. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want to, but I like to grab that loop with my pliers. Okay. So I'm holding that nice and sturdy. It's not going to go anywhere. I don't have to worry that I'm going to pull that loop out of shape, bringing it over here, switching hands, trying not to let go. Okay. And now I'm just going to wrap that wire right around. And there's three. Well, that wasn't the prettiest, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. We don't care. So there's our three wraps. Okay, I'm going to trim off the tail. And take that away. And so you can see our links are wrapped together. They're not going to come undone. I'm going to thread on a bigger bead. And we're just going to continue the process. Okay, same thing. Now, one thing that I will say that I think that some people don't think about until they're in the middle of a project. I always try to make my my loops going the same direction. And what I mean by that is when I go to grab this wire with my pliers, I grab it so that the loop on the bottom is facing away from me. So I'm looking at the side of the loop. You see what I mean? That that portion of the wire, not this one that's under my thumb but I'm looking at the side section of that loop, okay? So that's the same direction that I want to make my bend in my wire so that our loops are gonna go the, both go in the same direction, okay? Coming in with my round nose pliers, up and over. Now these next couple of ones, I'm gonna do 
quickly. All right, now, again, we don't want, well, no, we don't, we're not ready to add another one yet. So we're gonna come over here, put this in our other hand, and wire wrap here. Okay, and you can see I'm using my fingers. You can use our pliers if you want to. It's whatever is the most comfortable for you. Okay, I'm gonna trim that off. And now we've got two beads in our little chain. Okay, so now we're ready to add another one. We're gonna start with a fresh piece of wire. Same steps, you guys, same steps. I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit though so you guys are not here all day long, okay? Because you've seen me do it twice. I'll slow down when we get to the important part. Okay, up and over. Bringing it around. Sorry, I try to stay in the center for you guys, but when I get going, I kind of forget where I'm at. Okay. So now we're gonna add our small bead. Okay. Same thing. Okay. Bend that wire. Up and over. Okay, going all the way. But now at this point, we want to stop and we want to use our tail as our guide and we want to guide it through the ring on this one, okay? Bringing that all down and then we just want to very gently link them together, okay? Switch hands. I'm going to use my bent chain nose pliers to hold that loop. Flip everything around here. And then when I hold this guy, I hold it at a little bit of an angle like this, just so that it will make the bead fall down here to the other end. And I can see right here, I can see just how much room I've got, okay? If you don't and you hold it straight up and down, you're gonna be working against that bead and you may or may not realize how much space you've got. So I like to hold it at an angle so the bead, let gravity take hold of that bead and get it out of your way for you, okay? Wrapping around three times. You can tell my wire piece here was a little long, but that's okay, okay? I'm gonna trim that off. Okay. So now we're ready to move on. We've got two more beads to go, okay? The next bead is gonna be one of the big ones. So I'm gonna do this the other way this time, okay? Instead of just creating the loop and not attaching it, we're gonna go ahead and attach this one, okay? Because there's two ways you can do this. So I'm bending that wire, coming up and over, okay? Back around. All right, now this time before we go ahead and wrap, let's go ahead and attach this one, okay? Use that tail as our guide, guide that through there, just like so, okay? I do too, Dale. I love bent chain nose pliers. Yes, and you too, Jane. You guys, yes. Bent chain nose pliers, that's like my go-to pliers because you can get into some really, really tight spaces with them. That angle makes it so much easier to hold things. Really, really, really helpful. Whoops. All right. So there's that. Trim that off. Okay, so this one's attached. Thread the bead on, same thing. Just gonna go ahead and make my wrapped loop on the other end. And then we only have one more bead to add to this. Now, like I said, if you need a bigger bracelet, you may want to add an additional bead to this, okay? And of course, it's gonna, it's gonna matter what size beads you're using as well, okay? As to how many links you need in your chain because your beads may not be the same size as mine. And again, letting gravity take over here and drop that bead over here to the side so that it's out of my way while I do the wrapping. Okay. All right. So there's four. Now we've got one more to go. Same thing.
Okay. Just like so. You go ahead and guide that wire, push the two together. Okay. All right, hold that with my bent chain nose pliers. Go ahead and make my wraps. Hi, Madeline. <laughs> Madeline, guess what we're using today? We're using the pattern flat artistic wire. Love it. You guys, my friend Madeline, she works at Beadalon. And she is such a sweetie. All right, so there's that one, okay? Last one, and we're gonna thread on our last bead. Now, when we do the wrap on this one, we're gonna actually attach this to our little chains here. And oh, looks like mine came undone. We'll have to fix that before we move on, but that's okay. I don't know, I must have not closed one of those up very well. Okay, so grabbing that wire, bending it, okay? Wrong end. Ah! <laughs> Emily, I'm so glad you were paying attention. <laughs> My gosh, I was ta I was talking about Madeline and not even paying any attention. Thank you. I'm glad that I saw that. <laughs> All right, so yeah, do not talk and create at the same time. Emily, I tell you what, you are always you are you are on the spot. I tell you. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. <laughs> There we go. All right, so now let's pay attention this time <laughs> and put this where it's supposed to go. All right, there, hooray. <laughs> okay, grab that wire, that loop with our bent chain nose pliers. <laughs> I'm glad you guys have a sense of humor and are not like, oh my gosh, this girl's crazy, I'm out of here. <laughs> she doesn't know what she's doing. All right, wrapping around three times. What would be bad is if I did it on the wrong end a second time. Now then there would be no excuse for that. <laughs> All right. Now. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, you guys. I was totally not paying attention. I was thinking about our next step, and I was talking about Madeline, and yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we're ready. Back where we were before. Emily pointed out that I have lost my mind. Okay. All right, coming around. Whoops. Just like so. Okay, so now this guy, <laughs> we're gonna attach him to one of our 10 millimeter quick links. That's what our connection point is gonna be. So we're gonna slide that on and this guy is a little bit wider, like he's thicker than our wire. So it is gonna take a little bit of finessing to pop these two together, but it will slide right in there, okay? <laughs> Angie, I totally am human. I don't know how many of you guys are friends with me on Facebook, like not my business page, but just my personal page. I wrote an entire email the other night and I wrote the email as if it were the 17th. I thought, I literally thought it was the 17th, which is totally next week. My email was completely unnecessary. <laughs> and the person on the receiving end probably thinks that I am completely bonkers, but that's okay. All right, I'm actually gonna flip this the other direction. All right, so we're working in a tight space here, holding that loop together with our bent chain nose pliers, just like so, okay? You've got a tight squeeze here because now you've got this quick link on the other end, okay? And it's a little bit more bulk, bulky, all right? So again, use that gravity to take advantage of that space that you've got there. And be careful that your first wrap doesn't get caught on the tip of your pliers because that happens a lot, all right? Bring that around. It's a really, really tight spot here. All right. But we did get it, okay? So I'm gonna come in with the cutter tool and go ahead and cut that tail off. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, but our little chain section here was supposed to be three. <laughs> We've lost one. We have lost one of our links. This guy didn't get closed all the way. That's okay, so we're just gonna hook that back in there. And actually, I might have to open it up a little bit more. I don't know how 
he got loose in the first place, but all right, hooking that guy on. Double check all those and make sure that they're all closed. That one I haven't closed yet. Oops, goodness. Like I said, this is some sturdy wire, so it takes a little bit. All right, so now what you've got is the entire length of your bracelet. You've got half of your bracelet is this beautiful patterned flat wire and quick links, and then the other side is your beautiful bead chain, okay? But that's not enough. <laughs> I'm not done yet. I'm not finished yet. So what we're going to do is we are going to add some little dangles to these. We're not going to add it to this last one because this is actually where we're going to attach our clasp, okay? But we're going to attach dangles to these three just because I like to have a little extra cha cha to our bracelet. So some of these I've already done. You don't have to sit through all this, but I've made <clears throat> some little links, some little beaded dangles out of some really tiny little four millimeter beads. And I have attached them to four millimeter jump rings. Okay. So I've got a set of two that are blue. And then I have a set of two that are like this beautiful golden kind of bronzy color. Okay. Those are going to go, those are both going to go on that quick link. And then there's going to be a bead in the center. We're going to use this little shell bead and we're going to hang him in the center, but he needs to be wire wrapped. So let's do that. He is side drilled. So this is going to be a different technique. Okay. We had a question. Hold on. Let me scroll back just for a second. Where do you get the links? You can get the links at beetleon.com. If you do not want to order the links, though, you can use a 10 millimeter jump ring. Okay, Angie said, is it comfy with the loops touching the skin? It is. It is. I um, actually have more than one of these bracelets made this way, and this stuff is not scratchy or anything. It is nice and smooth up against your skin. No problems. <clears throat> Gonna have to call you, Mele. Add something else. Yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I had such a good conversation with him last night, you guys. I love Neelay. He is just the sweetest. He really is such a good guy. And like I said, I may or may not have a project that involves Neelay coming up. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so this guy is going to take some wire wrapping, but it's going to be a little bit different than our regular wire wrapping. And I didn't cut any wire for this ahead of time. I should have. I apologize that I didn't. So this is going right off the spool. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut a three inch piece of this and I just kind of eyeballed it. That's not um, an exact measurement. Okay, so this guy is side drilled. So it means we're going to have to create a loop on this guy that's going to hang on our quick link. Okay, so I thread this on and I pulled him to the middle of the wire. You really don't have to do the middle. If you do the middle, you're going to end up with some waste, but it's just easier for me to show it to you this way. Okay. So what you're going to do, is you're going to take one side of that wire and you're going to bend it over like that. Okay. You can see that's not 90 degrees. It's like, I don't know what the angle is there, but when you take your, you're making a V out of your wire. Okay. So you're hooking on to this guy. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to take the other side of the wire and do the same thing. So what happens is you've got this nice little crisscross up here at the top of our bead. Okay, so when we hang it straight, when we're looking at it straight on, that's what we've got. Okay, so now people do this a lot of different ways, but this is just my way of doing this. Yeah, 45 degrees. You're, that's, probably, that's probably pretty accurate. So what I like to do is I like to come in with my chain nose pliers with these two pieces of wire, and I like to pick one of them, grab it, and bend it straight up and down. Okay, so I gave it a nice, if it'll focus... Okay, you can see, and it doesn't matter if you use the wire that's going across the front, the wire that's going across the back, makes no difference. But I bend that guy 90 degrees, or well, not 90 degrees, it kind of is, straight up in the air from what it was, okay? Now the other one, I'm going to hold with my pliers here, okay? I'm holding that whole little triangle section in my pliers, and then I'm going to bend this guy down, okay? So now what you've got, <clears throat> excuse me. 
essentially what you have here is the exact same setup if we had done a wrapped loop, okay? Because we've got the this section of our wire that we're gonna wrap around, this is our tail, okay? Same thing, but the setup for the bead was just a little bit different, okay? So now, I'm gonna switch hands, coming over here. I'm gonna wrap once, twice, and then I'm gonna cut that off, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why, because we're not done wrapping, okay? We're gonna come up here, check that wire out, try to get it going up straight as much as we can. And then I'm gonna come in with my chain nose pliers and grab that wire right up against those two loops. I mean two wraps, okay? So pretend that these two wraps are a bead, okay? Now, I want my loop to go this direction instead of side to side, so in order to do that, I'm gonna take the wire and I'm gonna bend it towards me. And I know that's weird, but when I take it off the pliers, this is what you're gonna end up with, okay? You can see what I've got and how everything, the direction everything is facing, okay? So now, I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers, I'm gonna grab that wire, just like I would any other, any other bead, wire wrap, whatever. Okay, now we're going up and over, just like so. Adjusting our grip, I'm gonna bring it around, bring the wire around. So now we've got this loop, but you can see we've got this straight section of wire here. That's enough room for us to do some more wire wrapping with our tail, okay? But before we do that, we need to attach this guy to one of our quick links. So I'm gonna use my tail to guide the wire. Let's see, which direction do we wanna go? It doesn't really make any difference, I don't guess. Either side will do. Now we wanna gently guide this quick link and this wire loop together, just like so, okay? And now I kinda of pulled that out of shape, but that's okay, cause I'm gonna grab it with these pliers and flatten everything back out, okay? Just like that. So now when we switch hands, got a little tail here that I don't like a little piece of wire that needs to be trimmed off oh I didn't get it whoops there we go all right so now we're gonna wire wrap with our tail and we're just gonna wrap around to meet up with the rest of those wraps so it should look seamless when we're finished okay you shouldn't be able to tell with mine you can if you're looking pretty close, but you know, that's okay, doesn't matter. So we're gonna trim this off. And it looks like just one big wire wrap, right? You would never know otherwise that you were, you had two sections of wire wrapping going on, okay? So that guy goes in the middle just like so, and you can see the wire is not perfect, and that's totally okay, you guys, but it will drive me crazy if I don't try to at least smush it down and make it there. That looks much more uniform. Okay, so now, whoops, sorry, you guys. Like I said, we have these cute little dangle things <laughs> ready to go, and I will not, I won't take up any more of your time by doing all of these, but um, I'm gonna open this guy up and just show you one of these and attach our clasp and then I'll let you guys go for the day because I don't want to keep you here forever okay but I did show a bunch of different techniques so this is a good a good one if you want to come back to to see any of the wire wrapping this is a good one because we're using a bunch of different kinds of wire wrapping excuse that dog hair I have like there's a lot of dogs that live here <laughs> by a lot I mean three that's a lot to me and there's dog hair everywhere so my apologies. Okay, opening this guy up. I'm gonna put this on the other side of that one that we just, that cute little shell bead that we added. Maybe, I don't think I opened that up far enough. There we go. So when you get finished and you've added these to all of your 10 millimeter quick links, you've got a whole little set of charms here. So you could add dangles of any kind you wanted to. You could add your little bead dangles, you could add tassels, you could, I don't know, add real charms, little seaside charms or whatever you've got. 
Um, like I said, I'm not going to do the other two just because I don't want to keep you guys here forever. But in the finished piece, there are dangles on both of these as well. Just to kind of tie everything together. Just a cute little, little extra extra for our bracelet. Now for the end, I'm actually using this quick link as our hook. Well, I mean as our eye. So all I would do is just attach it with our lobster clasp on the other end. I just use a four millimeter jump ring. I'll do that real quick. Um, I am going to scroll back here in just a second though. There was a question. Deborah, you've got three dogs too. I've got three dogs and three kids. So my house is like full. And when it comes to dog hair, it is an accessory and a condiment. I mean, it's literally everywhere. I have a golden retriever and a German shepherd. And I don't know if you guys know about either one of those breeds, but they shed like crazy. And right now my German shepherd is blowing his coat. So he's, he is, he's a mess. He's like, literally he is a mess. There is dog hair everywhere. I clean it up every single day. Okay. So I just added a jump ring and a lobster clasp to the other end. And you don't need to add another jump ring because this lobster clasp will clear that 10 millimeter quick link. Okay. So that's all you have to do for your clasp. Or you could use a toggle bar here, whatever you wanted to use. It really makes no difference. Okay. So let's see, let me scroll back just a second. And let's see, da, 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 da. I could have sworn there was a question here. Hobby Lobby sells it. What were we talking about? I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you get the textured flat wire from Beetle On 2? Yes, 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 yes. It is on the Beetle On website. You can also get it at your craft stores. Here's the packaging in case you're looking for it. Now it's artistic wire but that is from Beetle On, okay? So when you are shopping on the Beetle On website, you wanna look under the heading artistic wire, and then this will come up as one of the artistic wire products, okay? You can get this in a pack of three, or you can get the individual designs just by the piece itself. You get a six inch piece of this, of each one of the designs. So you've got plenty to work with. Six inches is enough to give you, like I said, a whole bangle bracelet, which is the way that I'm wearing mine or you can cut it up and use the links like we've done here. And just as a refresher, a little reminder, you can add your patina inks to this and really buff it out. I didn't spend a whole lot of time like buffing this guy. I could get him to a really high shine if I wanted to. Okay, so lots of, lots of different things you can do with this, this flat artistic wire. I love it. I love the ones with the pattern. You can buy it without the pattern and then you can hammer it yourself. It's really cool stuff. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so let me flip you guys around again. Golden Retriever and a Shepherd mix is where, as well. Hair is flying here too. <laughs> oh, five cats and a tortoise. I love it. I love animal people. Okay, flipping around here. You guys ignore the mess. My kids. I share this room with my teenagers and my nine-year-old who happens to be over in the over there in the corner under a big blanket so she's being very quiet all right so let me turn this light out no glare <laughs> all right so what was I saying love animal people I love it that you guys love animals I used to have cats growing up um, the older I've gotten the less of a cat person I have been not that I don't love cats but I love other people's cats does that make sense I don't I'm, I'm just I don't know I'm not a fan of changing changing the litter box. My dogs go outside, so that makes it so much easier for me. Um, yeah, but I'm definitely a dog person, and I would have more than three if my husband would let me, but he, you know, three, that's, that's the magic number. So anyway, just a little tidbit about me. Oh, yes, I do too, Karen. I Swiffer and vacuum, and everything kind of moves over to the corners, and you end up with, like, these dog hair tumbleweeds, you know? Okay. Totally off the topic. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> Good stuff today. Thanks. Thank you, Mimi. I appreciate it. You guys, I am really glad that you guys joined me on your Friday, kind of mid-afternoon here on the East Coast and very early over on the West Coast and everywhere else you guys are. Um, I appreciate it very, very much. And like I said, if you didn't share this before, if you absolutely don't mind to click share to share this video so people can watch it again in replay. I really, really appreciate it. The more the merrier. Uh, don't forget to go check out the free gift Friday over on Jesse James Speeds. And uh, I think that's it. <laughs> I will see you guys again next week. I have got um, the schedule for next week. 
As far as my personal page will be the same Friday at 1 p.m. The Jesse James Beads Facebook um, project for next week on Thursday will be at 11 a.m. instead of 5 p.m. So if you missed that video yesterday when I told the time change, definitely mark that on your calendar or, calendar or change your notifications for that so that you don't miss it. And um, who knows, there might be an extra video in there next week. You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> All right, so you guys have a wonderful weekend. If you've got any questions for me or um, suggestions for projects that you wanna see, you just let me know, and I will see you guys again next week. Bye, guys.